or you join me in session in the Cotswold Water Park at my syndicate. I managed to get here last night, had one in the night, had one this morning. It looks like a mid 20s scaly, but I'll get it out in a minute and have a look at it. Once you've done that, I'm going to run you through the rigs, the bait and the techniques I've used to get this fish in the net. Without further ado, let's have a look at it. Well, slightly bigger than we first thought. 35 pounds of Cotswold carp, fully scaled, an absolute banger. Oh, the stock in this lake is absolutely incredible. I mean, just look at this one. We'll talk about the stock in a bit, but we'll get this fish back. What an absolute cracker. What an amazing fish. Like I said, I'm at my Cotswold Syndicate. It's not that old a syndicate, but about 10 years old now. Got a good stock of fast growing fish. About 20 acres, I guess. Um, obviously a gravel pit. Weed at the moment is quite severe. And one of the things that makes these kind of larger stock waters harder is weed. And in this lake, we've got two problems. One is the weed, and one of course is crayfish. The crayfish in this lake are quite ravenous, but luckily the owner has been potting the lake with these crayfish nets, catching as many as they can. And at the moment, now that the hot weather's died away, we've had a long, long dry summer. The rains have started coming, the crayfish have tailed off a little bit, and luckily we can now get back to fishing with real bait, not just plastics. So what it looks like is happening at the moment is during the day, the fish seem to be sitting in the weed lots of oxygen in the weed, and they're just enjoying that nice bit of shell, nice bit of shade. Then in the evening, they come away from the weed and they start to feed. And what I've managed to find here is a, a, a nice clear area, not massive, maybe the size of a bivy, which is a little bit silty, but quite firm. And they're coming away from the weed, maybe two or three wraps and straight onto that clear spot. And that's how I'm picking a few up. But to avoid getting caught up in the weed, I'm going with a solid bag approach. Unlike normal with solid bags where you tend to just fish the bag, I'm fishing the solid bags over a baited area. The reason for that is obviously the crayfish are still there. So what I'm trying to do is create a large baited area where the crayfish will come in, they'll hammer through the bait, but that in turn will draw the carp in. And in amongst that, of course, is my little PVA bag. Right, well, I'm going to get this brew down me, redo all three rods, and I'll talk you through how I'm tying those bags and those rigs up. One of the things about fishing with lots of weed is your line lay once you've cast. And what I'm trying to do now is just to tease the line basically around the little floating weed beds that are out there so that I've got a reasonably good presentation. The most important bit is the last 20 foot really, but you don't want it looping around a floating weed bed just drifting off in the wind, you know. A common mistake actually in, in when fishing with weed is to fish with your clutch really loose or your bait runner switched on to super loose. Really in this situation you want it to be quite tight because if when you get a bite you don't want that fish taking much line at all. So just this, you know, just just enough that you're not going to pull the rod in, but nice and tight. They sometimes call that locked up, but it's not really locked up, it's just tight. So 
So as we said earlier, solid bags is the technique we're going for in this particular session. A couple of reasons for that. One is the weed. The weed at the moment is quite bad, mainly Canadian weed, quite long, sort of three foot tall strands. Finding a clear spot is not too difficult, but trying to land a rig on a clear spot, not quite so straightforward. The bag, of course, will just go straight to the bottom, open up and you know you're presented. Nice little parcel of food on the bottom there. On the back of it, I'm also spodding boiling pellet just to give a nice big bed of bait. And the reason for that, as I said before, is the crayfish. I want the crayfish to come in, because they're going to come in anyway. I don't want them to destroy the bag within five minutes. So we put lots of bait out there so the crayfish are busy on the bed of bait. The carp can move in, push the crayfish away, and hopefully we get a bite. And the second reason is crosswind. With a crosswind, casting a rig out can be complicated. You can get tangles and bits and pieces can go wrong. And of course, a bow in the line. With a solid bag, and a small solid bag, you can just punch it quite hard into the wind, knowing that it's gonna at least land well presented. And if there is a bow in the line, it's not gonna affect you too much. The rig in the PVA bag is really simple, and simplicity is the key to PVA fishing. First thing you need is a lead. I use flat inline leads because they sit nicely in the PVA bag. Then the important bit is the hook link. This is a prototype uncoated braid. Really important for it not to be coated. You want the braid to be soft so that it can curl up in the bag, and not be hindered at all by the coatings. You don't want to use fluorocarbons, and again, short, four inches. Then, size six column V hook, not this knot, line a line a piece of silicone, or you can tie a knot on it, super sharp hook, and then you waft the bait. You don't want to put a pop up in there or anything too buoyant, a waft is absolutely perfect for this application. So, that's an overview of the rig itself. Let's get one into a PVA bag and show you how that's done. Start off with 10 to 12 inches of uncoated braid. Next, tie a simple overhand loop knot to secure your bait in place with a bait stop. Now, using a baiting needle, take a small section of one more silicon and slide this onto the hook link. Now, take your hook of choice. This is a size six Colm V and pass the hook point through the silicon and out to the side so that it locks your hair in place on the shank of the hook. To this, attach your boilie of choice with a boilie stop. Now pass the tag end through the back of the hook, forming a knotless knot, locking the hook and the bait in place. All that's left to do now is a five turn grinner, securing the hook link to the swivel. Take a fade solid bag, in this case I'm using a medium bag. You're going to fill the bottom of the bag to about half an inch. Next job is to drop the lead into the bag and work it towards the back of the bag, keeping your hook bait out of the way. Now fill the bag to about two thirds and then using your finger just make a small hole for the bait to sit in opposite the lead. Next thing to do is to gently drop the bait into the hole and just tease it into position, ensuring that everything is clear and not tangled. Now continue to fill the bag, leaving one to two centimeters at the top. Now holding the top of the bag, start to tap the bottom of the bag to help compact the contents. First, seal the bag by licking and twisting. Then, using some fade PVA tape, take off around six inches and wrap this around the bag four or five times, finishing with two double overhanded granny knots. Now take a boiling needle to release the trapped air and pierce the bag in the bottom corners. Using your fingers, tap and push on the corners to help compact the bag tightly. Lick the corner and stick it down, and then do the exact same with the other side. To finish the bag, trim away the excess PVA at the top of the bag, taking care not to trim your line. Well, the day has passed quite uneventfully. The weather's been up and down. We've had quite big winds, a few downpours, then brilliant sunshine, boiling hot. So it's been all over the place. But um, looking at it now, it's starting to calm down a little bit. Fish are showing off the back of the spot, which is quite good. 
I've just finished putting some bait out and now it's got to put out three bags on the spot get them right I've tied up several bags just in case I drop it short or go a little bit left a little bit right really important with bag fishing that if you are bag fishing and you go a bit short wind it in tie it again so I'm gonna get them three on the spot and hopefully we'll bag one by the morning With the bags ready, the rods were deployed to the baited area. The wind had eased off throughout the afternoon, meaning I could get the rods perfectly in place for the evening ahead. Well, that's two rods out. Third and final rod to go out now. Won't be touching those until they either go off or we have to recast in the morning. Let's get this one out. Well, that's gone down really well. Just a case now of sinking the line, really, just to make sure I've got good line lay. So much floating weed, and with the wind blowing around as well, it's all over the place. We'll get there, just take time to settle the line. Well, the night passed really uneventfully, to be fair. In fact, I was surprised that it passed uneventfully. Put a really good bed of bait out there. The fish were sort of showing in the area, but nothing happened at all, not even a single beep. So really, bite time's up to about 11 o'clock on this lake. Um, I think we're gonna sit it out here, a good chance of a bite. I don't really wanna recast the rigs because you don't really want fresh PVA on top of old bait. It just looks a bit wrong. So I think, you know, good chance of bait, still nice and, nice and sorted, like well presented. We know that anyway. Um, Craze wouldn't have done the hook baits in, not all three. So we're gonna leave it out there till about 11 o'clock. Um, and if nothing happens by then, we're gonna go on the hunt. A couple of bags and we're gonna go in the shallows and see if we can find the fish in the shallows. Maybe we just flick a bag to them. So that's the plan at the moment. Necklace cup of tea and uh, see how we get on. So as I mentioned, I'm using solid bags and the mix I'm putting in the bags is not just plain pellet. You can use just plain pellet and it's great, but I like to add a bit more to it. What's in my bags really is a combination of pellets. So lots of sizes from about three mil down to micro pellet. Then I add into it some ground bait. Now, just a, a dry ground bait, just to fill in the voids in the bag. Also the ground bait, helps you to dry the leads. So I've got it pre-mixed up in a, in a tub, all dry. When I've had a fish or bring the rigs in, I can just drop it into the bucket, move it around in the ground bait, and then that's dried the lead out nicely, especially with textured leads or coated leads. An additional edge in the bag mix is Himalayan rock salt. Not too much, just a couple of handfuls into the, into the mix. We all know that carp love a bit of salt, and it does really go well in the PVA bags and concentrates the attraction in that area. And one last thing I add to the bag mix, of course, is some liquid. Preferences for oil, I like to use hemp oil. I just add a bit of hemp oil into the mix to give you a kind of fluffy consistency. One of the benefits of using, using hemp oil, of course, is that when the fish get on you, you should see a flat spot come up over your area, giving you a really good indication that the fish are on your bag. With the usual morning bite time passing quietly, I made the decision to pack the kit up and get on the move. Although I had caught from the swim the previous night and morning, in my head I knew the fish had left the area. The only question was, where had they moved to? With the barrow loaded, the first port of call was the shallows, and it didn't take long to see the carp cruising around in the vast weed beds in front of me. 
This was definitely the position to be in and I wasted no time getting set up. Right, so we're on the move. Come down to the shallow end of the lake, very shallow. Absolutely choked with weed and we found a lot of fish, really in quite close. I think if I was to cast the lead, they'd all just do the op. Plan of attack is bait spoon, PVA bags, a little bit of pellet and flake bait in amongst it as well. Two rods out there in amongst the weed. Hopefully if we stay quiet enough, we'll nick one. Let's see how we get on. The fish are showing really close in now. They're kind of in the weed bed in front of me. They're a bit to the left. These ripples coming out now from a fish that's just thrown itself out. The difficulty now is where do you place the bait? With the fish so close and active, the baiting pole was the perfect tactic to get my rigs in position. You could feel the change in the weather with the stormy, fresh wind picking up again. I just got the first rod halfway out when the heavens opened, no doubt destroying my bag in the spoon. But it was too late to turn back now. The rig was almost in position. With the first trap set, my attention turned to my second rod. I decided to underarm this to a location a fish had just shown, trying my best to keep the inevitable splash to a minimum. Two rods were set and I couldn't help but get a third out. Such was my desperation with little to no time left. Literally on top of the bait. <laughs> well, by way of an update, the tension has got worse really, to be honest. We had some rain, then sun, rain, then sun. There's so many fish in the weed bed in front, it's hard to know where to put the baits, but I've got three out there. Confidence is sky high, but we are, the clock is ticking on this session. Only got a couple of hours left. Hopefully, get a bite. He's got non fish in front right now. Yep, bite, 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 bite. He's in road. We've got one on. The middle rod is just absolutely melted off. And we're definitely into a carp. The trick now is feeding it through this weed. As with earlier in the session, the solid bag's just been the one. You know, working with this floating weed and lots of weed and debris on the bottom know that bait presented so dropping that bag in there has just been the one again this looks like a really good fish as well right let's try and get it past that cray pot as well over the marginal weed come on in you come in you come <laughs> come on oh it's got loads of weed right there this is a very amateur attempt at the fish oh there he is Oh, woo. yes, we've got one. Well, it looks like a good scaly banger. Apologies for my quietness during playing that fish, but there's so much weed out there, I had to concentrate on getting that fish through the weed. It's in the net now though, so we can get it out, take a look at it. Well, check that out. The move paid off in the end. The rain's just starting again now, but those bags have done the trick. This mid-20 awesome Cotswold scaly carp just couldn't resist the PVA bag. Absolutely magic. Hope you've enjoyed this film and you've taken something from it. There's still loads of time to get out on the bank before the real cold weather kicks in. Autumn time, awesome. PVA bags, it's the way to do it. Well, there we are, one last look at that one before we slip it back and the session comes to a close. Hope you enjoyed it. I've had a great time. If you did enjoy this, do click subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.